Hi, I'm Chris. Uh, here at the Odin Zoo, I'm also a uh, member of AZAC. And uh, my section over here is the Jaguar Jungle section. I take care of jaguars and especially anteaters. Um, not to mention the sloths and the goose are in the same multi species exhibit. Um, we recently had a birth here at Audubon, uh, a uh, giant anteater baby, January 8th. And, uh, I think it was around, around 2 kilograms. And uh, since then, so it's now two months old. And, uh, growing quite nicely. Uh, we just recently noticed it's been uh, coming off of mom's back and forging on its own, which is right on time, considering it's about two months old. And uh, it's be showing, you know, uh, wonderful little signs of play with mom and the goodies that tend to come by and see it. Now, uh, so anteaters are a, a member of the, uh, the group Zenarthrins, which actually um, means that they have a strange joint system. Their, uh, their vertebra is, is unique to that of other mammals because it has an extra process in it. Now this process usually uh, is a, an extra attachment point for musculature that provides a rigid backbone for their particular activity, which in this case for anteaters is digging. Um, they're designed to rip up the ground, rip up the termite mounds, um, an incredibly stable base and a lot of power to back it up. So the lumbar section of an anteater has the extra basically processes um, form this rigid rigid you know backbone and then the rest of the work is done by these oversized forearms you can see on Zachary um, but the muscles actually run past each joint and then past the insertion and action point so um, yeah it provides for a greater leverage than you would normally experience in another animal um, you can also see this common with uh, armadillos who share the same feature only rather than digging in the ground these guys can rapidly tear through a termite mound which is almost on par with the consistency of concrete. <laughs> so, uh, you know, needless to say, they also have really large, um, strong claws for this uh, particular task. And it's ironic that then such a large animal, powerful animal, is able to maintain off of a diet of strictly insects. Um, they, they will occasionally take the opportunity to gather fruits, you know, if, if they come across it, or um, sometimes uh, organic matter, such as a deceased animal or something but most of the time it's gonna be insects. Now the giant anteater actually prefers the, I'd say, savanna grassland type area. Um, they're primarily terrestrial, unlike the smaller you know, anteaters. Um, but uh, they, they, they have been known to climb. Um, Zachary here apparently can climb quite well. Um, don't ask me how I know this, but uh, he's, he's pretty good at it. Now he's, he's since stopped his, his, his climbing ways, but um, for the most part, giant anteaters are terrestrial. Now, uh, one of the things that they do, since they can't hide in trees or anything, like the small areas, what they'll do for uh, you know, cover is they'll actually dig in a, a depression in the ground. And they'll lie in the depression and use that huge tail to cover up and hide themselves. Um, it's a very effective method of uh, cover. Not only does it do that, but it also regulates um, body temperature, which is another interesting fact about these anarthrins and anteaters, is that they have a lower than average body temperature for a mammal. Um, it's usually somewhere in the low 90s. Um, I think I can't remember the record, but I thought it was upper 80s, but it might still be like low 90s, like 90, 91. Um, as for conservation of giant anteaters, um, while they are not endangered, they are considered vulnerable. Um, they do experience pressure from hunting, but mostly habitat loss. Um, these guys do need quite a, a wide range to forage, um, considering their diet is highly specialized. So the more habitat that is lost or destroyed kind of limits the number that you can have in a given area. Um, one of the interesting facts that I have, have learned, has, have learned um, is that in considering forest fires, a lot of these slash and burn um, ethics of the countries you might find these guys in, um, their hair and their coat is um, highly susceptible to fire and flame and spark. So typically an area that's been slashed and burned, they have a higher risk of mortality in that, in that area. Um, now, in, in all areas, it's not this way. Like I said, it's vulnerable, not in danger. Um, there is a current plan um, which is a population management plan to increase their numbers, um, especially a breeding program in captivity, um, which is Audubon is proud to participate in. And um, as you can see, the results from that are the baby we had born here. All right, this is Anita and her new baby uh, that was born January 8th. As you can tell, she doesn't like, uh, you know, things getting too close to her and the baby. <laughs> and the baby shares the, uh, the, the same feelings. Um, but yeah, the baby was born January 8th, and um, is now about two months old. Um, 
Well, I uh, hope it hasn't been too much rambling on, and I appreciate you guys since y'all are a captive audience. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned something, and uh, please feel free to stop by anytime. See the exhibit, it's a wonderful little uh, exhibit, and um, we're here all here. Thank you.